Hello there everybody, it's Tykatar here and welcome back to another episode of our Summoner Only. And to start things off with, we have a quest to take on the Wall of Flesh a few more times because we're still on the mission to find ourselves that Firecracker and also a Summoner Emblem would be super handy. So I think that's the best thing to do as we get going here. Let's, uh, let's just see if we can make ourselves some potions and get ourselves down there. We've actually been using up quite a bit of our potion supply, so before too long, it's probably going to be about time we do a little bit more fishing and maybe tend our herb farm. Actually, maybe we should check on our herb farm real quick before we head down because I'm still a little bit concerned about the growth rates there. Being in the jungle, it has not really, uh, not really seemed to grow very much, and that might be an issue. Here we go, heart reach, we need these. Um, one of you mentioned on the last video in the comments that these rage potions, increasing our crit chance, are actually not very handy, especially now that we are currently relying on our spider summons to do like all the damage and we're hardly using our whips at all, the spiders themselves can't crit. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't think the whips can either. Yeah, so these wrath potions are pretty much useless, actually. So thanks a lot for pointing that out to me in the comments. So let's skip these for now. But that does mean that it's going to be important for us to, before too long, set up ourselves a custom corruption biome and get those ebon koi for the wrath potion. Let's go check on our herb farm and see if it looks any good at all. It, uh, there's not a lot happening. There's one, one blooming shiver thorn. We do have our staff of regrowth on us, so I guess we may as well harvest what's here, but there's not a whole lot. Like, I guess there's a, there's a handful of these moon glows, so that's something, but overall, definitely not too many things here. I wonder if it's worth setting up a second herb farm somewhere else and seeing if it has a uh, any better growth rates because at this rate I don't know if this is going to sustain our potion supply. Oh wow, our fire blossom still isn't even fully planted. We don't have enough seeds for the whole row. So maybe that is something we should do real quick and maybe not right away, but maybe after we take on the wall of flesh here. Let's see if we can fight the skeleton. Oh yeah. As soon as our spiders get on him, he's gone. But maybe after we defeat the Wall of Flesh a couple more times, we can look into just popping up a new herb farm somewhere else that might be a little bit more efficient. And the only other thing I think we need is our seafood dinners. Let's just grab all those. Let's go ahead and bewitch ourselves here. And if we need to reapply that, we have it in our piggy bank for when we're down here. Oh no, we don't have enough villagers at the pylon down here. Oh, dang it. I think uh, that's because our demo man died last time. I don't remember from what. Maybe it was that hallowed mimic, actually. Or that might have been a while ago. But anyway, yeah, we don't have our demo man, so we can't teleport down here. Maybe we should just put our wizard there for now, once we get down there, and then we can at least use the pylon again. Maybe while we're here, we should also grab a crystal shard or two. All right, here we are. Let's put our wizard down here. Also, between episodes, I have made a little improvement to our spider base down here. I added a bunch of uh, silk ropes or like spider web ropes, whatever they're called, and um, sort of hung them web rope. That's what they're called. And I hung them around the cave right next to the spider. So I made it look a little bit more spidery. I think it actually adds quite a bit to it. So that was fun anyway. You know what, maybe we should try just for fun. We could start on the left hand side instead of the right for this wall of flesh because we've, I think we've only fought him running to the left here. So we could change it up just a little bit and do the other way. I'm pretty sure we have everything we need to do this. Uh, we did it once right at the end of the last episode and it wasn't too bad at all actually. So as long as I just stay focused and don't run into any big buildings or walls, I think we should be good to go. We got our 300th Hellbat there. It is significantly farther over to the left hand side of our arena, which is probably why we, uh, why we haven't done it this way yet. If I remember right, it just became daytime, so hopefully we'll be able to have the guide respawn while we're fighting the first wall of flesh and we can make it more efficient that way and take out a few of them in succession. Okay, here we go, finally at the end. So I think what we gotta do is drink our potions, de-summon our spiders, and then resummon them just to make sure they have the, the damage buff applied. Although 
I don't even remember. Do we even have any damage buff potions? I don't think we do. But we do have, I guess, the seafood dinner, which probably increases it slightly. Anyway, before further ado, let's get going here as I get smacked by that giant bat. And here he comes. All right, let's see if we can take this guy out. Hopefully we can. Hopefully we can do it without too much trouble and do it multiple times so that we can get ourselves that nice whip. Oh man, our spiders just melted all of those hungry right there. Wow. They must have been hungry for the hungry. I'm also thinking that after we do this, our next whip upgrade may not be too far in the future because we might be able to go for the cool whip, which we can craft from a frost core if we can get an ice golem taken out. So that might be something we try to pursue before too long anyway. We just got him down to half health with our spiders, so I think we're... I think we're looking good. Our spiders are just slowly but steadily eating him up there. Tiny spiders just biting his eyeballs. That's probably not very comfortable. All right, he's getting down there, down to about 20% or so. Maybe we should start start keeping our distance a little bit more. Our spiders are still on him. Our spiders actually have really, really high range. Oh gosh, I had to jump to dodge this demon and almost got caught up by him, but we definitely had enough damage and burned him down, so that's awesome. Sweet. We got him down, we got another relic. We still don't have a goat skull from him, which is a little bit surprising actually, and kind of unfortunate, because that will be quite nice to use actually. Really nice mount. Sweet. Now, has the guide moved back? No, the guide has not. I guess we just gotta wait for the guide. Let's, maybe I can open this treasure bag and see what it is, but it, hopefully the guide can move back while our potions are still running and we can take advantage of having these. But I guess in the meantime, we can go ahead and open up this bag. Oh my gosh, another laser rifle. So we got, that's our third laser rifle in a row here on our summoner run. And of course we just get a ranger emblem, which is all but useless. I guess actually we can still use that for crafting like the destroyer emblem or something like that. Once we get all of the mechanical boss souls, but for now, that's not gonna help us out at all. Dang. Oh, sweet. Right as we get back to the start of the arena, the guide moves back in. So, just in time, Scott. Sorry about that. He had a rather short lifespan there. <laughs> Looks like we only have 35 seconds left on our endurance and well-fed buffs. So we might have to eat some more seafood dinner while we're fighting here. We might be able to get away without using another endurance potion though, because we did stay pretty healthy last time. I think the uh, biggest issue for us is just uh, any flanking demons that uh, sort of jump up behind me. He's almost already at half HP. I think we're actually doing it faster than last time. Let's, uh, I think I better eat some more seafood here just to keep our health regen up as high as we can have it. Well, I guess we don't have heart lanterns strewn across our whole arena, which could still improve our regen, but that's a little extra if you ask me. I have done that before though. All right, all right, down to 25% roughly. Gotta get these hungry out of here. Okay, he's starting to speed up now. He is definitely getting faster. I'm gonna start trying to gain some ground on him. And I'm surprised at how far our spiders can reach, kind of like, we're like a full screen away, or half a screen, I guess, and our spiders, actually, wait, where are our spiders? Uh-oh, where are our spiders? Did they get knocked off? I don't know if they're still here. Do I have to resummon them? Oh, shoot. Uh, die, die, die. We gotta get this guy out of here. Oh my gosh. I don't know what happened there. I think our spiders may have gotten knocked off of our buff list because we may have we may have exceeded the buff um limit oh man that was pretty scary we got our another treasure bag though and right as we uh as we were killing him there i noticed the guide moved in again we got another guide so we can go ahead and run for that one more time here and most of our potions will still be going so that's pretty good let's make sure all of our spiders are here and accounted for that's weird i could not see where our spiders were right there i have no idea where they went off to looks like we will have to refresh our bewitched buff though and hopefully that'll do it if we just get that one renewed okay here we go finally made it to the end of the arena get our bewitching station out and activated and let's uh let's go ahead and do this one more time here we go. Nice, nice. I might have to just make sure all of our spiders are summoned. There we go. 
and we should be good. Let's do this again. I'm actually pretty happy with how uh, how we're able to fight this guy with our spiders. Like, we do pretty well now. We have a lot of damage and we can stay really far away. So especially towards the end, it's a lot safer when the lasers really start rapid firing in. It looks like one more minute exactly on our on all of our main potions. So hopefully we'll we'll take him out in that time. And I see all the fire blossoms blooming too. Oh man, maybe if we take this guy out just in time, we'll have enough, uh, uh, we might have a moment to run back to our herb farm and harvest our fire blossoms. But for now, I should probably focus on not getting murdered by this guy. Down to 25%. Come on, spiders, stay on task. We gotta take out the big wall himself. Where are they? Oh man, they're getting distracted by all the hungry. You know what? I wonder if my whips are actually hurting us because they're allowing the, or they're marking the hungry and the spiders are coming off of the wall to fight him, or fight the hungry rather. That might be a problem. Okay, let's see if our spiders are on him. Come on, come on. Okay, yes, he's finally out. Man, the ending is so scary, even though we've done it a bunch of times now. Oh, yes, and there's our goat skull. Awesome, that's really good. Now we can actually move right across our arena with no problems at all. Okay, that's awesome. Sweet, now let's run back home and let's harvest our fire blossom while we have the opportunity. Oh, it's a sandstorm too. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think it's definitely gonna be a good idea if we can get another herb farm set up. This one does look really nice and match our jungle base, but unfortunately it's just not very functional. Also, we have a mimic nearby. I wonder if he could be in our arena. And we got the guide to move back one more time. So maybe we can fight the wall one more time before uh, before we move on here. I don't know where that mimic is. I think it's probably just worth getting back to base and probably running after the wall one more time here. Although, do you think we should stay around our desert during this sandstorm? If we could get a sand elemental, that would be really cool. Because as I was I was talking about last episode, how we probably didn't need to mine any titanium or anything. But we could potentially go for the... Is it called forbidden armor or something? I actually can't remember what the armor set is called. But if we went for that, that is both a magic and summoner sort of overlapping armor set. And so that could be something that we want to go for. And if we did, we would need some titanium to make it. Oh, we got a sand shark and a big guy. Okay. And another big guy. Oh gosh. And the sandstorm's over now. So hopefully we can take these guys out. Okay. looks like we survived. Let's actually run back down and do one more wall of flesh fight since we got one more voodoo doll and the guide has returned. Jacob. I think that's like one of our original guides names actually. All right. Let's see if our pylon works. And yes, it does. Thanks to our wizard being here. And now that we have our goat mount, we'll easily be able to make it across the arena here. And we'll also actually be able to outrun him a lot faster too, the wall of flesh, once he goes into his scary mode. I'm wondering if we could fight it without our potions this time. I don't know, that might be a bad idea. Without iron skin or regen or heart reach could be pretty dangerous. But at the same time, we do have our goat mount now, so I don't know. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. See if we can save on a round of potions. If not, we're gonna be probably adding to the death counter. I will, however, keep our seafood dinner munched on. I don't, I don't want to try to go without that. The last couple of fights, I don't think I've actually had to use a health potion either. So we do have that if we need it. I'm actually, I'm starting to wonder if I should just not be using the whip at all because it really just marks the, uh, the hungry and distracts our spiders. He's down to about a third HP. Yeah, let's just let our spiders do the work instead of whipping because I think the, the whips just kind of screw up the spiders, honestly. Okay, he's starting to speed up. He's starting to speed up. Dodge the lasers. We might have to get on our goat soon. Oh gosh. If we get hit by more lasers, we're gonna be in trouble. Oh, we dodged those ones though, that's good. Come on, our spiders can get him, right? I think our, hopefully our spiders can get him. Yes, there we go. Oh man, we really stayed farther away with the goat, which worked out pretty good. Nice. Okay, so that's four walls of flesh taken out. So hopefully, well, we got three more treasure bags. Let's see if we manage to get anything we want in them or not. Here we go, the grand opening. Three treasure bags. One, uh, not what we want and not what we want. It's a godly breaker blade though, that's kind of neat. Two, hey, yes, there's our summoner emblem. Okay, that's important. That's at least one of the things that we really needed. 
And our third bag, uh, still not that firecracker. Dang it, another breaker blade and another ranger emblem. Well, at least we did get the summoner emblem. That is very important. And that can probably, it can either replace our band of regen, which by the way, as I'm remembering the comment from last episode, this lucky modifier with a 4% crit chance will not really help us out as a summoner. Same with our feral claw modifier, we probably want to change that up, but all the other ones seem to have either violent or menacing, which should be fine. So I think this summoner emblem, let's replace our band of regen and that will be nice. Now we should have a lot higher DPS. In fact, I guess about 18% higher, which is pretty, pretty much a lot if you ask me. Put the extra emblems in here. That's the wall of flesh taken out a few more times. Unfortunately, we still don't have the firecracker, but I think we might take a short break and maybe do some fishing and maybe frost core harvesting. We'll see. It's not raining right now, so we can't find any of those ice golems but maybe before too long we'll have the chance. Actually, maybe real quick what we could do is head over to the snow biome and let's actually reforge our accessory that has Lucky. Let's see if we can reforge these Feral Claws. I'm trying to think of how soon it's gonna be until we can upgrade these into like the mechanical glove, but I don't think we can for a little bit. So it's probably worth doing this reforge <laughs> straight into another Lucky one, although it's not very Lucky in this case. There's armored. I think I want to go for damage. A third lucky one. No way. Ooh, warding is also kind of hard to pass up, but I think I want to go for, go for one of the damage buffs. They're menacing. Let's stick with that. Okay. And the rest of these probably are pretty good, I'd say. I guess the next thing that we're going to have to watch out for is the blood moon fishing. Oh, whoa. There's enchanted night crawlers out tonight. Wow, why are they out here? I don't I don't know. I thought they only spawned during the lantern nights. It's just like a not even a full moon or anything special by the looks of it. Maybe that does mean we should do some fishing here. But before we do that, I think maybe we should uh look into making a new herb farm. So, let's see if we have any planter boxes left over. We probably don't though because I usually just buy the exact number that I need. Oh, nope. I didn't this time. Here we go. Let's buy a few more of these planter boxes. Let's go for 20 of each herb. Maybe we just, I don't know, make it right here uh, underground. Or actually, maybe what we could do is dig out a little, a little opening in the hill here and put it in the hill right there. That would be kind of fun. Let's try that. Blast out a little opening here where we can access it from. All right, first dynamite away. Hopefully it gets the background walls. Yes, okay, perfect. That's just what I wanted. Awesome, let's maybe do, maybe like one or two more blasts. Now we just have a little bit of cleanup to do and we have our ancient chisel, which will probably come in handy for this part. Oh, here's Brett. The guide is back once again. Let's see, Let, I'm gonna go for some kind of shape sort of like this. And now let's just lay out some of these planter boxes and see what our size needs to be. Actually, this might need to be wider than I was anticipating. Maybe what we could do instead is sort of extend it down this way and do a diagonal pattern for our planter box rows. Oh, hey, there's our demo man. He's finally back. It took him quite a while to find his way back home, actually. Okay, so maybe something like this for the layout. Now we just need to figure out the walls. Let's take out the, the rest of this dirt. And I'm thinking probably a bunch of flower walls and maybe some glass as well. Okay, okay, okay. I think here we go. Got a little bit of furniture in here, got some lights. I was gonna use the fireflies in a bottle, but I could not find any fireflies at our base. So I was gonna match it to down here below, but instead we had some Chinese lanterns left over sitting around, so I grabbed those instead. And right as I was finishing up, it started raining actually, so we might actually have an opportunity to actually look for some of those ice golems. That could be cool. But anyway, yeah, I went with just the brown painted large bamboo for 
the wall pillars, and then a few uh, bamboo fences, sort of horizontally. Every other herb layer, sort of mixed in just to change it up a little bit. And then just some flower walls to add bushes with glass in between where nothing else was. And that's pretty much it for now. So hopefully, maybe we can get some new herbs planted there and they'll grow a little faster. But speaking of herbs, um, it's a full moon right now, so it might be good to run and see if we can harvest any death weed. Yes, we indeed can. Cool. And also the water leaf since it's raining. And let's try to run over to our little snow outpost and see if we can find any snow golems or ice golems, I guess. Let's just, uh, I guess we'll just bewitch ourselves. And also what we should probably do is grab our cooked fish, eat some of that, and let's run over to the snow. Well, teleport over, because running is a lot of work. Here we are. So let's just head over this way and see what we can find. Maybe we could even... Oh, is this some pink ice here? Looks like we have some hallowed snow, actually. Ooh, that could be a bit of a problem. Oh, there's an ice golem nearby. Where's that guy at? There he is. He's right over there on the left. Let's see if we can get our spiders on him. Yep, our spiders are going to work on him, so... Hopefully we can get him. It might just take a little bit of waiting for our spiders to take him down, but honestly not too much because uh, he's already down to almost 9,000. We've got him down below three quarters already, so it shouldn't take too long at all. Oh, watch out for this wandering eye though. Interesting how we whip the wandering eye and then he just flies away because it became daytime, I think. But uh, our spiders aren't actually coming up to help us even though we mark these guys with our whip. Kind of interesting there. All right, the first ice golem was almost down. And honestly, we actually only need one ice golem because it just takes one core to make the cool whip. Nice. And unfortunately, we didn't get a frost feather there, but we don't really need one too bad. We do need a wing upgrade before too long of some kind though. Maybe it would be worth sticking around and trying to find another golem or two. So far, it's not looking very promising. I don't know if it's going to be worth it because we do only have a 1 in 3 chance of getting it anyway. So let's just pack it up for now. We got what we needed and let's see what we can do with it. That didn't take long at all, actually. <laughs> let's talk with Brett about the crafting. I know we need some souls and... Oh, I guess it's just souls, actually. Wait, eight souls of light and eight of night. Okay, that's actually really easy. We already have plenty of souls of light, I know that. So we might just need a little bit of the night. Yeah, we don't have any souls of night collected, but wow, we already have 56 souls of light. I actually don't even know where our crimson has generated. Okay, it's way far over here, sort of encroaching on the underground desert actually. Come to look at it, we have not explored much of the underground desert. Probably we should just head down to the underworld and farm some guys there. Let's try to do that. We can take our pylon down there. Here we are, so as soon as we some, can take some guys out here, we should be getting some souls. So we just need eight of them for that cool whip. There's one right there, so shouldn't take long at all. And in fact, we could easily get our water candle out here and see if we can get overwhelmed with enemies or not. <laughs> if we get another um, voodoo demon or two, oh wow, took some damage from that guy. That would also be handy. I also brought some purification down. Oh, I missed that guy. <laughs> our spiders got him before I could get him with the purification powder. But I did bring some purification powder. So if we do see another tortured soul, we can hopefully get him cleansed up there. Just so we can have the tax collector join our world. May as well. Ooh, got a nice little coin portal here. Uh, only five gold out of it, so not very special, but uh, still kind of cool. We could do with some more wall of flesh battles because uh, getting that firecracker would still be really cool. I at least want to get it at some point, even if we can't use it because we've already passed it with, say, the Cool Whip. Oh, we got another Tortured Soul somewhere, but I don't know where. Oh, there, he's way in this, in the bottom of this lava pool. I don't know if I want to uh, convert that guy right there. Let's maybe find a different guy who's not gonna instantly die. It wouldn't hurt to be able to pick up a little bit of ichor while we're here, too. Oh, there's a megaphone from that 
Wait, what did we just get a megaphone from? We picked up a megaphone and a guide voodoo doll kind of simultaneously, it looked like. That was weird. But if we could get some uh, some Icker stickers, we could get some Icker collected as well, because that, that wouldn't hurt, I would say. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really know that there's much we can craft with Icker on a, uh, on a summoner only character. Oh, can we save this guy? Um, let's see if we can get rid of the spiders there. I uh, was really slow finding the purification powder in my inventory, so I instead just went for disabling our spiders. Okay, we got him changed back though into a regular person, and now let's see if we can get some more souls. I wonder, uh oh, get out of the lava bro. Well, well that didn't last long. Oh, we got a savage cane though, a classy cane. A <laughs> savage classy cane. That's fr that's pretty funny actually. That's cool though. I don't mind collecting those because those are hard to uh, hard to grab. Also, we're on fire and we're really low on health. What are we? We're at seven souls. We still need one more. Maybe I should eat some fish. That'll that'll save us. We're a bit low here, but uh, we're not on hardcore, so I'm not too worried. Wow, I definitely almost died to that fire imp because he teleported right where I was jumping to. Oh wait, our health potion's up. I guess I could drink that. I don't know how long that has been available. Okay, there's our last soul. There we go, and I stepped in lava again. Oh wait, there's another soul up here, actually. Cool, one to spare. Let's head back and get this whip. I think that sounds like fun. Oh, and it's a thunderstorm too. Wow, very scary. But yeah, two more voodoo dolls is good to have, as well as the megaphone. Probably use that eventually. Wait a second. Shoot, what we might actually need to have an upgraded anvil before we can craft this thing. Ah, yeah, we need a mithril anvil. Shoot, dang it, I overlooked that. Well, I guess we either go break some crimson altars and mine for that or we do fishing and hope to get enough in a crate that we can make the anvil i also still kind of want to uh, see if we can get some sand elementals to spawn in oh yes there we go we got one because it would be kind of fun to mess around with the uh mess around with the forbidden armor but i don't know if we're gonna survive this actually we might live we have nachos so that's good how are we gonna let's see if we can lure this guy back to our Oh gosh, we're really low. Back to our base. Can we just sit up here and not die to him? I don't know if we can, but maybe. Wow, the sand elemental has more health than the ice golem, doesn't it? I think the ice golem only had 1200 health, but the sand elemental is way up at 15. Or no, 15,000 rather. The ice golem had 12,000. She's gonna be falling eventually. <laughs> Hopefully she can uh, admire our beautiful relic showcase while she's here. I don't think her sandstorms can actually hit us in this little spot here. Almost down and there she goes. Our first forbidden fragment. Nice. Also, oh, there's a sh sand shark down there. Oh, the sand shark got stuck down there because he can't swim through the sandstone bricks that we built our the base of our thing out of. The dune splicer can get through it though, that's for sure. Oh man, let's see if we can spawn in another sand elemental or not. Man, this is actually really kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's a thunderstorm and we're also getting swarmed by all these crazy sandstorm enemies. Oh shoot, another guy spawned and just came up right underneath. Ah man, definitely was being a bit reckless there, but uh, I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> Nothing to see here, everyone. Anyway, what I think maybe we should try to do is maybe get a mithril anvil. And the easiest way to do that is probably to break some crimson altars and mine for it. We got palladium first off and orcalcum second off. So an orcalcum anvil is what we're going to need to pursue. Okay, let's do, let's do a total of two of each. Okay, and adamantite is our final ore. And right like that, that should be two rounds of every one, so that'll be enough just to get us the little bits that we need. And let's uh, let's head back and actually just go down our elevator and see if we can find that stuff real fast. Go ahead and grab ourselves a spelunker potion or two. First off, we need ore calcum, right? So right here and to the left, and that's probably all the ore calcum we need. Is this not, oh, that's not ore calcum. I mean, that is ore calcum, but I was getting, <laughs> forget everything I just said. I was thinking of palladium when I said ore calcum, and that is not 
Palladium, but that is for Calcum. This over here, though, is Palladium, which we need to make our first pickaxe upgrade. Oh, here's another big bunch of it over here. If we get this, we'll definitely have enough for our pickaxe. Palladium, here we go. Plenty for the pickaxe. And yeah, I'll probably go with the pickaxe here instead of the back down we go. And now we can actually get that orichalcum that I was talking about on accident. And I guess for now, all we need is enough for the anvil. So see some adamantite here. In fact, a pretty good amount of it. But unfortunately, that's not even useful to us right now because we can't mine it. Oh, here's a little bit of it right up here. Oh, here we go. Here's a good amount of ore calcum. After we get this and maybe that little bunch below us, I think we'll be set to go. Three bonus pieces down here and let's uh, let's head back. Wow, it's actually 12 for the anvil. That's kind of more than I remembered even. We actually don't quite have enough for the pickaxe, so we will have to go back for that in the future. Let me just see how much it is for the pickaxe. Is it actually 20 bars for the pickaxe? Oh, it's 18. Man, we're one bar short. Oh, shoot. I gotta go find four more or calcum for that, just in case we need it. There's gotta be some somewhere. Oh yeah, that patch right over there. That will do it. Let's see if we can get to it. Also, there's a gold chest over there. That might be worth checking out too real quick while we're here. Just some, some shoe spikes and a teleportation potion. So that's kind of fun at least. Let's check out also the forbidden armor here. So it's uh, 16, 10, and 20. So it's actually only 46 titanium bars for the whole set of forbidden stuff or same with adamantite which is what we have isn't it it might be worth getting so the forbidden armor is six higher defense and let's see we got 15 increased minion damage on the mask probably worth looking into this actually but maybe we'll save it for later for now we can finally go ahead and craft ourselves this cool whip 76 summon damage and it's a sharp one, so it's 87 summon damage. That's a lot more than either of our two that we have here. And what's the special on it? Strike enemies to summon a friendly snowflake. Oh, that's cool. Let me have some of that cool whip. That cool whip. Let's actually test that out. We might be able to retire both of these whips at this point. Maybe, uh, maybe we can also talk to Trogum here and get it reforged. How expensive is this? Not terrible, not terrible. Savage. Okay, let's stay with Savage actually. With the damage and the size. The size is really good on the whips, I find. It has a lot more range than these other two whips do. Spinal Tap and the Snapthorn especially are pretty short range. Oh look, an Angry Tumbler we can test it out on. Wow, it just like two shot that guy, didn't it? That's a lot of damage, actually. Let's go somewhere to test this out. Maybe our, our, our jungle arena real quick. All right, here's an archer. Let's try actually without our spiders even for now. Oh, wow. So this giant snowflake actually just sort of zooms around attacking nearby enemies. That's cool. That is really cool. And of course, just the base damage on this whip is pretty high, like way higher than any of our other whips, which we've now had for quite a long time, actually. Oh, Tim is coming in, though. Where's Tim? Here he is. Oh wow, Tim does not like our new cool whip, does he? <laughs> Made short work of him. And these jungle bats just kind of get smacked by it. This is a very, very good upgrade to both of our other whips, if I'm not mistaken. The snowflake actually kind of can go through walls too. And it looks like it lasts as long as we are attacking, basically. Oh, another tortoise down here. He's in the water though, so he's gonna be jumping crazy. We did take some damage there. <laughs> We're actually, we actually could die pretty quick. Oh, no way, we got a turtle shell and a bone sword. And then we died to that hornet. Dang it, I was just pushing the health potion button too. Ah, I probably shouldn't be messing around quite that much. It's all fun and games until someone gets stabbed in the heart by a giant stinger. Well, there's number 13. That's awesome though. I'm really happy about that cool whip. It might be Blood Moon fishing next. I'll have to look into that though because I'm actually not super familiar with the methods for taking out the Dread Nautilus and stuff early on. So I'll have to look into that but I'll figure out where we're going and then we will continue next time. But for now, I think we're, we're gonna wrap it up. We got our tax collector, well, his name is Tweed. I wonder if he has a tweed suit to go with that. I'm gonna wrap it up for now. The song of the episode is Shadows in the Neon Rain by The G. It's a really awesome synthwave song that I just discovered the other day. So be sure to check that one out. 
And other than that, I hope you have an outstanding rest of your day and thank you very much for watching.